I'm Daniel Garrett, and you're watching Average Joe Sports Talk. Daniel Garrett, head football coach, Collinsville High School. Coach Garrett, it's a real honor to have you on. I know the people in Collinsville is going to be really excited about seeing this. Um, talk to us about how you got into your football career, coaching career. So I grew up in a, in a football family and, um, you know, my granddad kind of started that tradition as a, as a coach. He was a head coach for like 30 years in South Alabama, Georgia, and North Alabama. And so, you know, I grew up hearing football stories and my mom has probably been to more football games than, than most women combined. And uh, so I, I grew up in it and I just knew kind of always what I wanted to do. And then, you know, it's being around good people you know, that, that, you know, mentored me and, and pushed me in the right direction. It just made things you know, just kind of work out to where, you know, I always had a passion. I wanted to be a head football coach, and now it's finally, finally happened. So, Some of those early memories, what's some of the things that stuck out to you about football that you really, really liked? Um, well, for my family, it, I mean, football's done a lot. My granddad grew up with nothing, and, uh, you know, his coach kind of helped him get a tryout at a Itawama Community College, and he hitchhiked all the way there. Uh, from Halo, Alabama, and then earned a spot, and then went to play at UNA, um, and then started coaching. And so, um, you know, he told me many stories growing up, just kind of mentoring me and uh, giving me, you know, lessons that he learned from coaching. And so, some of these, th some of those things, I still look back on to this day. You know, it's like, well, this happened to him. This is what he did. This is what he did wrong. You know, things like that. So. Um, I, I've been very blessed with, with good people around me. Absolutely. Um, I know you mentioned your grandfather. Who were some of the other influences you had growing up that kind of led you into your, your football coaching? Um, well, I went to Rogers High School, and I played for Dan Beavers. Um, and he was he's always been very good to me. Uh, Randall Martin came in my senior year as the offense coordinator. He's influ influential. Me and him still talk. He's the head coach at Deschler now. Um, we're very good friends. And uh, uh, Brent Palmer. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, there's so many to name, I'm going to leave people out that, <laughs> that really, you know, my uncle's head coach of Madison Academy now, he's, he's always been very influential with me. Um, just, you know, and of course my friends and just my whole family. It's just been, you know, like I said, I've been blessed to, to have good people around me. I gotcha. Um, so when you're, when you're coaching football now, do you find yourself, you know, channeling some of that the, the teachings and the early things that you've seen growing up uh, during your playing career? Well, I think people that, that grow up with you or that are around you see more of that than you do. For me, it's just how I am. It's just my style. It's, you know, people I've been around, I've stolen things from them, and that's just kind of who I am. That's, and that's all I try to be is I try to be the best Daniel Garrett I can be. And that's all I'm ever going to try to be. But definitely, like, you know, my mom says, that's exactly something your granddad would have done. <laughs> and, and things like that to where, you know, I don't I don't know if I notice it, but definitely people around me notice that. And you mentioned your style. So for those who haven't got to see you, like the, you know, your everyday fan at Collins, who haven't got to see you on the sidelines, are you like an animated guy or are you pretty even keel type guy? Uh, I'm pretty animated. Okay. Um, it's, <laughs> not, it. it's not hard to see what I'm thinking or, you know, feeling, um, you know, I, I, I kind of come into it with, you know, people hear me say this a lot, enthusiasm unknown to mankind. You know, I want our kids to bring the juice every day, but they're not going to do it if I don't. Absolutely. So I try to lead by example with everything that, that, that I do. Um, what was it that you seen in Collinsville that kind of intrigued you to go there? So I was told, you know, one, before I even applied that, that this place had the best, you know, community support around. And so I knew if you had the community support that it was going to be a good job. And uh, so then I interviewed and I had a great interview process. I, I, you know, I felt a good relationship with the principal, uh, Mr. Crawford. And so, you know, everyone that I talked to that I trust told me this is a good place. And so, I mean, it was a no brainer to, when they offered me a job to say yes. Absolutely. Now, um, speaking of Collinsville, they're coming off probably their best season of all time. Um, they're also coming off the 100 year celebration, a lot of pride, um, but what came with that was a lot of senior leadership that's going to be gone. You know, they got like 15 or 16 seniors just graduating. Caleb Jones mentions one. Um, what are some of the things you're going to do to try to maintain what they've got and time to take it to that next level? 
well, I think, out of the gate. I think there's several things in the fact that, you know, each team is its own team. And just like, you know, like I said, I try to be the best Daniel Garrett that I can be um, as far as I'm going to do my style, I'm going to do things my way. And um, I, I try to encourage these kids to be themselves as, as well. You know, I don't want anyone to try to be somebody that they're not. They need to, to embrace their role. And everyone's got a job to do. And if everyone can execute their job to the best of their ability, then, then we're going to be just fine. And so the main thing for me is building that culture to where um, it doesn't matter, you know, who's there. We're all going to be successful if we buy into that culture and we're binding together and things like that. And so really and truly, I'm encouraged the fact of all the success that the consoles had and the fact that kids know how to win. And, you know, that's something that's, that's hard to be taught and it kind of has to be learned um, over time. And so th these guys coming back, we got a good senior class that, that you know, knows how to win. And so we're, we're going to build off of that and just embrace the challenge and, and you know, we're just looking forward to it. Absolutely. Um, when you're away from the game, let's step away from the game of football for a little bit because everybody has to recharge. What do you do to relax and recharge the batteries? What's your getaway? Uh, well, I like to play golf. Um, I play a lot of golf. You must be pretty good because that's usually pretty frustrating for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's frustrating for everybody. I don't care how good you are. But you, you hit those few good shots, it keeps, that's keeps true. bringing you back. You that know? And so I, I love to play golf. Uh, you know, I like to be out in the water when I get a chance. And, there you go. And so that's that's kind of my outlets, just being around friends and family. Oh, uh, what's on your playlist when you jump in your car? What kind of music are you going to have? I like a lot of different genres. Uh, gotcha. My favorite genre is probably 90s alternative, like the Goo Goo Dolls, gotcha. things like that. That all these kids don't even understand what that <laughs> is. They have no idea. I get made fun of everywhere I go by these kids. But that's that's kind of my my go-to. There I you guess. go. I like it, man. Um, did uh, did you listen to the Stone Temple Pilots, things like that? Nirvana, Pearl Jam. Uh, oh yeah, I like I like that too. I had to ask that before I moved on. Yeah. All right. um, who is a coach at the next level you truly admire? Somebody that's like, man, that guy right there has it going on. Um, I think there's several. Um, I mean, Jeremy Pruitt is the first that comes to mind. And, you know, I had the honor to work for his father, who's been one of the most influential people in my coaching journey. Hey, and, coach. I, I, you know, I worked with this with his little brother as well. And so when we got the chance, to, when I got to tag along, he was always really, really good to us. And, um, you know, so he, he definitely speaks out as somebody I, you know, I idolize and, you know, like, like to model things around. Um, you know, other guys, uh, Willie Fritz at, at Tulane. Um, Tulane's been very helpful to, to me as a coach as far as meeting time, and, and they're very, you know, do things the right way. And so those are some people that come to my mind just right off the top of my head. Uh, um, the guy used to be at D.C. at Navy, um, Buddy Green. He's been very influential with me. And so we've modeled a lot of defensive things I've done in the past around him. And so those are just some people that, that, that come straight to my mind. There's several more. Um, you know, I like what Dabo Sweeney's done. And, oh, yeah. And, and, you know, so they're, they're, the list goes on and on. Absolutely. Um, here's a question I, I like to ask coaches, and everyone always has a different answer for this, but they're all trying to get to the same answer. With all the distractions going on from – you know, it being cars to cell phones, social media, girls, whatever it may be. How do you keep your guys focused in a, in a, in a, in a time like we live in now? I think, uh, I mean, it, it is a challenge. Um, it, I, and, you know, I try to preach, you know, our culture. You know, we, we all have this culture that, you know, it can be binding or it can be destructive. We want our culture to be binding. We have these six core values that we try to live to in everything that we do. And that includes the technology. You know, maturity is one of our standards to where, you know, you gotta think about that message before you send it or before you tweet it. And that's just part of the deal. And, you know, but that, that's part of the game nowadays is, you know, navigating those things. I, you know, I think some coaches try to, you know, to stay away from social media or try to discourage it. My, my thing is I wanna encourage our kids to use it to promote their selves you know themselves and our team just like I'm going to do and it can be it can be a positive or negative mm -hmm. all right but if you teach the right way to do it I think it can be a positive absolutely and so that's the things that we try to do with our leadership council 
is educate them on the right ways to do things uh, and that you can never delete anything that's sent and you know that sometimes you need to call and vent if you got issues and not write it down to Absolutely. where it can it can cause problems another thing i i, I caught from that uh from you saying that is this is something they can carry over to their day to day because when they go to work they still got to monitor their social media. That's right. They can't just say what they want. Hey, my boss is terrible. You know, that'll get you out of yeah. there in a hurry. In and real life. you know, we kind of, you know, with, my, with our coaches, we try to use the 24 hour rule. And the 24 hour rule is this, you know, if sometimes everyone's going to be upset about certain, certain, certain things and, you know, but typically if you go home and sleep on it, you wake up the next day, it's not quite as bad as you initially thought. Correct. And so, you know, we, and you, you talked about go to your day-to-day -day jobs. And that's our whole role as a, as a coaches here is to try to develop our players to be, you know, good fathers, good, you know, husbands, things like that, to where um, if we can do that, then the wins will take care of itself. 100%. I, I agree with that. I like that. Um, you, you mentioned your mantra and, your, and, and, you know, your culture that you talk about even on Facebook. Can you dive into that, what you, yeah. you know, a little bit? So, to me, that's the most important thing. I don't care what schemes you run. I don't care what you do, you know, with anything else. If your culture is negative, then you're not going to be successful. And so with us, we, we've used the word mortar to describe that. And what mortar means is your culture can either be binding or it can be disrupt disruptive, you know. And so like the binding, you know, mortar can be described as two things. It can be, you know, the stuff in between bricks that if you build a brick house and don't put the mortar between there, then it's not gonna be a very good house. But if you put that mortar, it's gonna bind it together and be strong and last a long time, all right? But mortar can also be described as the things that shoot, you know, the bombs, the rockets, things like that. It's very disruptive, Correct. you know, it causes death and, and, and a lot of bad things. And so we don't wanna be like that. We wanna be like, you know, the, the mortar in between the bricks. And in that word, it's also an acronym to where each letter represents one of our core values. And so our six core values are mature, maturity, overachieving, responsibility, uh, toughness, attitude, and uh, relationships. And so if we can meet those six core values in everything that we do, then we're going to win games. We're going to be successful. And so that, that's part of our, that is our program. Love and it. you know we, we have no rules that is the rule it, you know follow the standards live up to the core values and if you do that then everything to else takes care of itself you got accountability at each end of the spectrum with that i like that right there um here's another question we love to ask coaches uh do you love the wins more or hate the losses more that's tough man i hate losing i just <laughs> i i can't i can't function um you know, if we're losing, I just can't, you know, I, I love to win. Like I thoroughly enjoy it, I, you know, but you know, I really hate to lose. And if we lose and it's, you know, you, you try to have the 24 hour rule and start working, but it's, it gets super hard sometimes. <laughs> and so, you, you, you know, you're motivated to try to prevent that from happening. No doubt. Now, if we were to cast a movie about you, which actor would play you and why? Play me, oh man. <laughs> We always uh, love these answers, man. Man, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, Clint Eastwood? <laughs> That'd be probably a good one. not. Uh, man, Ryan Reynolds, man. That's, a, that's uh, who yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with him. There you uh, go, man. Um, let's see here. So, if... if uh, let's see. Pause for a second. You'll know to cut the video right there. Here we go. All right, so here's a question I got to ask you with the COVID-19 that's came down and changed the game for everybody. And obviously when you got hired, you haven't had these guys for the spring. How much more important is this summer workout is going to be for you to get your guys ready for fall? Uh, I think it's very important, you know, mainly just to get kids back in shape, you know, yeah, we're doing all these things, you know, sending, you know, trying to monitor, you know, their activities and stuff like that, and encourage them to work out, getting them workouts. But, you know, just trying to get them back in shape to where we can be, you know, we can do all the things we need to to play a game, 
um, and all that stuff. So that's going to be very important to make sure the kids are back in shape. And because to me, that's one of the most important things is, you know, the hard work is done in the weight room. And if, if we can, if we can do a good job there and work hard there, then, then everything else will be okay. Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, in the summer, you know, we lost the spring to install things, but we're trying to do that now online with Zoom and um, we're getting a lot of good participation with that. Um, but, but definitely the summer will be very important. Absolutely. Uh, now, this next one's gonna be a two part question. Um, and you can answer it however you'd like. The first part is if, if I'm a player playing for Collinsville and I haven't gotten to meet you yet, uh, what's, what are some of the things you're gonna kind of demand from me, from me playing for you at Collinsville? Um, to, to, to be the, the best, most archer that you can be. Absolutely. And to, you know, you, you're gonna have to adhere to all of our core values, um, be accountable, um, and then show up and, and bring enthusiasm unknown to mankind every day to every drill, you know, the whole thing is as soon as you leave the lock, locker room to walk on that field, you know, we're going to have a sign that says, I'm in. And that means I'm zoned in today for what we're doing. And I'm bringing enthusiasm unknown to mankind to this practice. And so that that's kind of my, that's our expectation. Absolutely. And, you know, like we said, all those are covered in those six core values. Love it. And so, you know, if we do that, then we're going to be good. Here's the next part of that question, and this is something that you know, a lot of successful coaches really kind of get a hand on early. If I'm a parent, you know, what what should I expect from a parent, from a parent standpoint? Well, it's like we talked about a little bit earlier. You know, you know, with our culture, we're trying to develop good young men that are going to be good fathers, good husbands, things like that. And so we're we're going to hold these kids accountable. Uh, we're going to monitor their grades. We have something you know called the AAA program to where we. Uh, monitor their attendance and their attitude in class and their their daily work grades. Love it. And so every two weeks we check that, and if and if someone has got any any type of tallies on that, then there's <laughs> some there's some type of repercussion to be made. And then if everyone's like on, it. if everyone has 100, percent you know, in good standing, then there's a reward for everybody. So, you know, we're we're going to monitor these these you know these players and and try to encourage them and teach them the values they need to be successful in life. It's on and off the field. Yeah. Love that, man. Absolutely. So, and you mentioned a little bit of this earlier. When when you talked to, uh, uh, you know, Coach Pruitt, and he, he mentioned about the city of Collinsville and stuff, uh, about the support there, um, do you find that support as a 100% as a positive, or do you feel a little bit of pressure of, hey, man, I've got this whole town on my back. I, I've got to go get this done. I find it is encouraging just because – if people don't care, then, I mean, I wouldn't be here. Absolutely. I mean, I want people to care. And with, I mean, if there wasn't pressure, then it, <laughs> it probably wouldn't be that great of a situation. Absolutely. And so, you know, I, I see it as encouraging because if people care, then then they're going to support me. Absolutely. And, you know, and then they're also going to hold myself accountable, which is what they need to do. Absolutely. Love that answer. What's your most proud moment you can think of right now as a coach? Maybe it's a player that wasn't that good you got 100% effort out of, or, or maybe it's a moment or a game you won or something like that. Um, I'm trying to think. Most proud moment. Um, it's, pro it's probably going to be that state championship at Ravenwood. That game we played, we played a team – that had not been beaten in three years. They were top 10 in the nation and uh, they were supposed to win. No one gave us a chance. And we had a team that, kind of like this Collinsville team, had a huge senior class, was supposed to win it the year before, got beaten overtime in the championship game and lost. And so this group wasn't supposed to make it all the way back there. But everybody you asked, they said, you know, what do you want? We want a ring, we're gonna win a ring. And, you know, to their credit, they put in the work and we got to that game. We had a great game plan. We had a, a you know, had, I remember we hit, I coached outside linebackers that year and we had a kid that, um, you know, he got better every week and uh, we switched up a coverage and he got a pick. Um, it was a very t big turning point in the game for us. And uh, I just remember me and the defense coordinator and Brayson right there was so pumped because <laughs> Not only for, for the team, but for that one, you know, 
player because he'd come such a long way. That's awesome. Uh, we love to ask this one. What's your most embarrassing moment you've had? Embarrassing moment. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see. I feel like I feel like if you ask the players, they could probably listen to a ton of them. <laughs> you ever flipped out on a ref? I mean, I've gotten animated, but yeah. like nothing that was like embarrassing. I don't think. Um, never asked him to step outside. <laughs> no, I never did any of that. Well, let uh, me ask you this. How much do you think the game has changed and evolved since, like, you played it to now? And how have you had to evolve as a coach to match that? I think the RPO game is, is what's really kind of came into the forefront to where, you know, I think offenses have, have gotten very, you know, you know, I, I guess I'm trying to think of the word, very advanced. Yeah. And so it makes it hard as a defensive guy, which I've historically been, um, as far as defending some of that, and I've, I've shouted linemen downfield. If I've shouted it once to a ref, I've shouted it a million times you know, for these RPOs. So I would say that's probably been the biggest thing. I, and that's nothing, I, I'm encouraged by it. You know, I think, you know, with, as times go by, you know, times change and you either adapt to the times or get left behind. And so we're, you know, everything we do is about adapting to the times. I love that answer. Um, for the, for the, Average fan that's going to be sitting in the stands at Collinsville on Friday nights, what can you tell him right now, without a shadow of a doubt, your team's going to look like? We're going to have a lot of passion, and um, you know, every you know, do your job is one of our one of our. It's that's kind of a mantra, and uh, you know, everyone's got a job to do. So our job as coaches is to you know educate our kids on what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to do it, you know, when they're supposed to do it. So what you're going to see is a team that's very disciplined, that plays extremely hard, but also has a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the expectation there. All right, I want to close with this question here. Um, what do you hope that the kids that play for you, whether it be kids prior to now, to the kids at Collinsville, whatever your future may hold, what do you hope some of the main things they take over into their day-to-day -day lives when they go to have families of their own and, and grow up and be young adults? I think those those main core values we talked about, and you know, just being being a man, you know, which being a man comes with, you know, being accountable, um, understanding tough times are going to happen. How are you going to respond to those? And uh, being someone that everyone can count on, um, being dependable, those those type of things, which I, you know, that's setting up our core values for our program. All those things were, you know, designed based on that is to develop. You know, good, good young men, and you know, I heard a coach say one time, and I really relate to it. And the fact that you know, someone asked him what type of team they're going to have this year, and he said, "Well, I won't know the answer to that until 15 years down the road when we see what type of husbands and fathers they are." Makes a lot because, of sense. Yeah. So, because typically, if you take care of that, wins and losses take care of themselves. Makes a lot of sense. Well, coach, we're looking forward to seeing you. We'll be on the sidelines checking you out and have you on the preview show and. We'll definitely be staying in touch this fall. Absolutely. Can't wait. Thank you a lot.